Welcome everyone, uh, this is Adrian Coronel, Marketing and Sales Operations Manager and we are transmitting here live for you. Uh, thanks for waiting a few minutes because we experienced some <laughs> technical problems but uh, we are here for uh, talking about the Smart UE1 as we promised. Okay, today with me uh, we count with the collaboration of our Technical Sales Manager for the UK, Matthew Day, and our Technical Sales Manager for Asia Pacific, Maxime Belloc, uh, which uh, you already seen. <laughs> okay. So uh, first of all, uh, we're gonna we wanna start talking about how to cut cost and boost efficiency on your daily entity inspections with the Smart UE One. But first, let's see it on paper. Okay. So here you go. Uh, on paper, we have the Smart U1, this specific device that it's well known as our inspection Swiss Army knife. Why we why we call it like that way? Because uh, it's a multi-method, single channel, and multi-app instrument for efficient, flexible, and reliable inspections. As as you have seen, uh, specifically is tailored for aerospace but useful and any other industry this is very important for you guys because uh, UE1 is dedicated to aerospace it's created to aerospace but it can be used at any other industry it doesn't matter if you work for oil and gas or if you work for uh, construction or uh, for any other um, industry that it's possible to be needed the entity inspections okay it's a digital continuity break between acquisition and reporting. And this is really important because uh, nowadays everything is uh, digital and our device will give you the opportunity to uh, create reports and then sending to uh, your reporting system. Or if you don't have a reporting system, we can create it for you or we can uh, help you in order to connect your devices and utilize this digital continuity information as long as you work okay uh, the, the smart uv1 is also designed for different level of expertise from non-expert basic mode with assisted diagnosis for non-entity certified personnel such as b1 mechanics and for specialist expert mode for entity level one to entity level three okay and it is referenced in more than 50 NTM procedures to maintain Airbus aircraft. Okay, that means that uh, you have, uh, if you are operating an Airbus fleet, uh, you can be sure that our device is already uh, referenced and it's already well considered by Airbus as manufacturer. It doesn't matter if you are not uh, operating any other uh, type of aircraft because we can uh, you can still validate your measures and you can still validate your processes with the help of your level three okay so remember multi-method inspection dedicated tool for boosting efficiency in l in all your daily operations okay the key the key benefits of u1 uh, we classified it in five levels because we are on this webinar for you and for explaining you how to get uh, the advantage of the benefits. Okay, first one is efficiency and how we translate to reality efficiency. Okay, the UE1 will give you uh, the opportunity to avoid delays thanks to remote as instance utility. Uh, yes, we have developed an, a tool for uh, remote assistance and remote communications to connect the device to your operator and then to your engineering department. That means that if in a certain point of their work, your um, colleague or your technician has any problems or any doubts by perform, uh, to perform any kind of, of job or any kind of inspection or any kind of configuration, your department of engineering can contact him directly and give uh, give him support then 
The second one is uh, speed of inspections with assisted data and analysis, uh, which is a really cool feature because you can take advantage of presets and pre-programmed uh, configuration in our applications of the device in order to speed up certain type of inspections, okay? Uh, the third one is uh, expanded capabilities with a digital continuity brick, as we discussed later. You can, uh, you can connect your device, generate a digital report, and, and put it into your database. Uh, it doesn't matter if, if your database is local, or is regional, or, or it's global. Okay, this device gives you the opportunity to start uh, the whole process, the whole digital continuity process. Flexibility, uh, Smart UV1 improves your flexibility by multifunction built-in capabilities. Uh, we already said that it's like a Swiss Army knife. Okay, you have ultrasonic uh, inspection, you have eddy current inspections, you have resonance, and you have plenty of other applications that we'll explain further, okay? Uh, a multi-method device for multi-method certified personnel because nowadays it's pretty common on NDT Universe that uh, one technician, one engineer has more than one NDT certification. So uh, we uh, match logically the certifications of, of people, of engineers, of technicians with uh, the multi capability of our device. So uh, that's one way to uh, boost your efficiency and to cut down your cost. Okay. Every certified, every certified or non-certified member can use the tool. This is another super important feature that we mentioned uh, before because uh, there is some applications that are that are pre-programmed in order to allow your customers or your your technicians to only go for a specific tests with specific functions and forget completely about a programming or a configuration okay obviously uh, a, a b1 mechanic or a, a b2 mechanic can use the the the, the application and uh, it should be obviously uh, certified by your level two or level three. But at the moment of the job, at the moment of the of the grounding of, of an airplane or a specific need, you can always be be ready and have the flexibility to sell to say to your to your to your team, hey, uh, John, please take this device and go for that check. Okay. So traceability. Uh, we share accurate reports th thanks to assisted reporting capabilities because our device uh, can be pre-programmed on the uh, reporting in order to show you only the information that your work process demands, okay? So you gain time because uh, the, the software automatically filled up the report, your technician only checks it out and then it can send it to uh, as we said, start the digital continuity chain, okay? For the accuracy, uh, we keep results in demand on aerospace sector thanks to our repeatability. Repeatability, it's a really, really, really good and pretty well, it's a necessary uh, feature, okay? Our device can manage, our device can give you that accuracy, that aerospace needed precision, but it's not restrained by aerospace. So you can take advantage of that precision and take it into another industry or for another application that you may need. Okay? For rel reliability, uh, we, we, we're using here a fact, a fact. We inspect confidently with a plus 50 NTM procedure certified device. So you can be uh, sure that your device is reliable, it's pretty well considered, and it will give you always the same measurement. Okay? So, uh, in an overview of the software, uh, you will see that many inspections at your fingertips, as we, as we mentioned before, multi-method inspection dedicated to boosting efficiency in all your daily operation. Please remember that. So, the basic uh, 
let's say overview of the software included on the tool is comprised by three standard models okay standard ultrasonic testing eddy current testing and resonance and then you can add five optional modules with which is thickness gauge thickness gauge cladding detection electrical conductivity coating thickness and galvanometer okay remember all of this is not necessarily uh, mandatory because the tool adapts to your need so depending on the model that you select and on the optional model or application that you select you will uh, you will receive a tool that is 100% adapted to your needs. If you need everything, you you can buy everything. But if not, if you only have, if you only need uh, UT and thickness gauge, perfect. Well, you can you can have it straight. And then, if your technical demands changes, then you can ask for some actualizations, and you can add this to your device. Okay. So remember that flexibility is the core of our device. So uh, what we call solution spectrum from, for your needs is all of these uh, options center into our customers' operational needs. Okay, uh, as, as I've mentioned, you can make a mashup of all the, the, the applications or the basic models that you need to and obviously it doesn't matter uh, in this case if you are working on pre-file on retrofit on file or or at MRO okay and even if you're working outside our space industry you can still use the the, the full system okay so um, at this point uh, I would like to to point to my colleagues and they will show you the operation of the standard models of UT and ET and some applications like thickness gauge and cladding as well okay at first my colleague Matthew will 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 show you operationally will show you the device and will show you how it's done okay so let's see it hello and welcome to our webinar for the smart UE1 Today I'm going to be talking about the ultrasonic floor detector and thickness gauge. So very quickly we're going to do a quick walk around the instrument. Um, based on the Panasonic Toughbook, it's a ruggedized, uh, it's a ruggedized Toughbook uh, with a 10.1 inch screen. Along the top we have a data connection for networking. And we have our module on the left here with our eddy current and UT cards in. The UT is twin LIMO connectors, twin zero zero LIMO connectors. Um, there's a 16 pin Fisher eddy current connection with encoding as well, and the battery on this side. Down the side here, we have our charging point, stylus pen. For more refined work and on this side we have our usb and hdmi connectors so the screen of the more of the ue1 um, on the screen we see our eight applications green meaning uh, they are eddy current based applications and red meaning these are ultrasonic based applications to enter into each one we double tap on the module of choice. So looking at the screen on the ultrasonic floor detector, we find that we have on the right hand side of the image, our hotkeys. These remain on screen at all times. The hotkey at the top is how to close the application. We have a pause feature. So when we put up a signal and we press the pause button, we can remove the probe and the signal remains on the screen the opportunity to enlarge the display area to get rid of the uh, program keys down the bottom um, being replaced by our gate measurement position gain 
velocity, range, zero and delay um, can all be inputted by either double tapping and we can enter in a free text box or we can use our plus and minus keys or our jog wheel, our digital jog wheel down the bottom there. Coming along the bottom, our transmit receive menu, all options on here can either be adjusted using our plus and minus for our fine adjustments, jog wheel for a coarse adjustment, or again, we have our direct enter down here. The only exception being is our custom filter. Four pre-programmed filters with the option to have a, with the option to do a custom filter as well. And there. there now here we can put in our um, low cutoff and upper cutoff of our digital filters as well. Come across to our gate menu. Now, the UE1 has five gates available, uh, P0, P1, P2, P3, and P4. Each one can be activated or deactivated by simply pressing the large green button. When it's illuminated, that gate is now active. The gate position can be, can be manipulated by altering the start, end, and threshold, and again, we can either do these as a direct read or using the jog wheel or using the plus and minus for more fine adjustments. Standard features include where we um, take the measurement from and how the gate is synchronized. So at the moment, because we're using this as the interface gate on a delay line probe, um, we've got it set on pulse and display. Our measurement, our measurement um, is a drop-down list and can measure in microseconds, millimeters, inches, or plies. So the good thing about the UE1 is that by inputting a ply value here, we can then input the depth of plies, thickness of plies, and under the measurement feature, we can then measure in ply depth as well. We'll keep it in millimeters for now. And each gate, we're able to put an independent velocity against each. Um, so on P0, we've got the velocity set for our um, Rexolite or acrylic delay line. And then on P1, we've got a library value set up for the speed of sound for composite, just a standard composite um, velocity there. Coming across to our TCG, so we have the opportunity to uh, input TCG on the UE1. To activate it, we simply press and illuminate the green TCG activate button, and we also do the same for the, the visible. The trigger type can be measured against the pulse or gate, and it's the starting point or inhibition can be either a, through the plus or minus, through the digital jog wheel, or again, a direct enter. For our TCG, the grid down on the bottom right here is starting, will, will be populated by when we add in more TCG points. So the first point, uh, the X value, is automatically calculated by the UE1 and then every time we add in another point, it puts in the next, it puts in the next point at the next position it thinks. We can adjust the start of the point of each, uh, we can adjust the, the point of each point here simply by double tapping and using the free text box or again using the jog wheel or plus or minus, and we can do the same for the amount of gain in the system. And the more points we add, the more points we get on our graph, on our table down the bottom there. The UE1 does have a does have an auto TCG feature as well, as does we can alter the target um, amplitude percentage that we're looking for. We move across to the A scan menu. 
here we have the opportunity to um, do an auto calibration for velocity and we simply do this by entering in the thickness of the material uh, where the red 25 is and we can do this for multiple steps and the system will then produce a straight line graph uh, it's a nice visual representation so if one of your calibration points is off we can actually see it visually during our calibration and we can erase those points and start again once we're happy with it we press validate and quit and it will then automatically calculate our calibration our calibrated velocity um, our measurement value microseconds millimeters and inches we have the opportunity to have a a scan reference or a persistence signal And we can display the menu, we can display the A scan in full, rectified, uh, or positive or negative. The Smart UE1 being designed for aerospace comes with the two options of pulse echo or through transmission. Our averaging and our sampling rate are all drop down menus. And we have the opportunity to, to interrogate what's happening in the probe itself by using the FFT um, screen as well. So here we can see a direct readout of what's happening um, on the probe. We can alter the colour um, depending on whether or not we're working inside or outside. Sometimes changing the background from black to white and changing the colour of the A-scan itself helps for helps to visualize the a scan a little bit better so we can opt in that the ut module comes fully ready to perform c scan inspection so if we had a um, x and y scanner um, here with us we would be able to uh, input the encoding um, data for an x and a Y scanner. To activate that, we simply illuminate the green light to each on, on each one. And along here, we can input the length, the, um, the scan steps, the encoder step, and we can perform, we can have a selected encoder as well. We can also change the way we increment, we scan our scan direction, so we can increment upwards or we can always start from the, the, the one side, the left hand side. Stick. The UE1, we can have different displays, we can have different screens. So we've got our standard amplitude one activated here. We can have a amplitude C scan. CT is time of flight and then we can have combinations as well we can also have an electronic c scan as well if we activate the time of flight you can see i've got a gray scan palette here and by simply moving the probe across our surface we now get a far better representation um, and a nice easy visual signal to to, to, to go against we can change the palettes so we have a load. Of, we have a lot of preloaded, um, preloaded pallets in here. So we can come over to here, and again, we can see our. We can see our signal is being um, represented on the B scan and on the corresponding A scan as well. If we switch that off. <clears throat> Coming across to the final menu down here in files, this is where we can save our configurations or we can load configuration data. We're also able to save the A scan, we could save a C scan, or we can save the picture of the screen, the entire screen. So saving the A scan or C scan or saving a picture is very useful when you want to import that picture into a report, which can be done on the UE1 because it's a Windows-based tablet. Uh, it comes with, or you can activate 
the Microsoft Office packages for Word and Excel, so you can have all of your reports built in here. So if we come to Save Configuration, this is my 5 megahertz delay line configuration. And along the bottom here, we have a thickness gauge button. Now, if we save, if we press that and illuminate the thickness gauge button, this then will take this configuration that we've saved in the floor detector mode and transfer it into the thickness gauge mode. So. To access the thickness gauge from the home screen, again, we double tap on the application and the instrument will uh, start up the thickness gauge and initialize the, and initialize the module for us. The thickness gauge is has a far more reduced capacity than the floor detector is capable of. Um, the reason being is that because we can set up the thickness gauge inspection data and, and calibrations in the UT mode, um, we wanted to not have as many features available on the UT of the thickness gauge so that it is a quicker and faster, um, quicker and faster module to work with. Um, the thickness gauge is an icon based um, module so down the right hand side we have the ability to manipulate the A scan positioning and on the right hand side we have the ability to switch our gates on, perform a, a two step calibration. The freeze is on both left and right so depending on which button you have, which hand you have available and we have a plus and minus um, for making incremental changes to any screens. If we press the load button, here we'll see our five megahertz delay. How we can do that. Now, because we've already programmed this inside the floor detector module, we already have the velocities calculated on exactly the same part. Um, if we were to do perform a calibration, the instrument would ask us to do perform a two-step calibration and it takes us on a step-by-step -step walkthrough through the process. Now, placing the probe on the part, uh, along the bottom of the screen we see an orange bar and that's the position at which the instrument is taking its measurements from. So you can see here, right in the corner, nice solid piece of composite. Uh, this is about a four, uh, sorry, a five millimeter thick composite piece. We do have some defects. So if we scroll across, what we can start to see is we can start to see a reducing in the thicknesses. If we want to, we can have the gates activated to show where we're taking the measurements from, or we can switch them off. The operator can manipulate the delay position by using the plus and minus keys here and uh, can do the same for the time base, the gain and again on both left and right we have the freeze icons. We have our file data at the top so across in the middle we have our calibration file name, the what mode we're measuring in, so in this case mode 2, our zero position, our velocity that we're using to measure and the units in which we're measuring in. Pretense of the thickness gauge is that it's designed for very quick and easy, rep re repeatable inspections. Um, it, we can use it, so the floor detector can be used by um, an expert, level 2, level 3 maybe, um, and they can confidently pass over a thickness gauge module set up by them with reduced, cap with reduced um, ability to, in to, to make alterations. Um, and confidently know that they can go ahead and use the, ins use the instrument to perform the inspection as well. Thank you very much for your time and I'll pass on to Maxime. Hello everyone, this is Maxime speaking from Singapore and today I'm going to show you how to operate the conventional eddy current module on the Smart UE1, which is one of the eight different modules that you can use on that piece of kit. Let's check it out. 
So it looks like this, and on my desktop, I've got all the eight different modules. So as I said today, I'm going to open the conventional eddy current by double clicking on it. I'm also using a 500 kilohertz probe, and I've got this uh, block, which is made of uh, aluminum 2024, with three different cracks on there, uh, with three different dimensions. First one is 0 0.2, this one is 0 0.5, and this one is one millimeter. So when I open it, it looks like uh, like this kind of uh, of uh, conventional eddy current device, uh, and the, the approach is very step by step. So the first window is basically where I would set up all the different parameters, uh, the frequency, uh, the the, uh, the gain, the phase. <coughs> I can also set up the filter here. Then I can move on to display. Then. Uh, I've got features to set up an alarm, which I can turn off now. Um, and when I start, I also I either have the possibility to, test, to set up all the parameters by myself, or I can choose to load a configuration, which is a pre-recorded file that I've got here on my on my tablet. Uh, it's that simple. So basically, I could uh, I could open a file and and load it, which is uh, which I'm not going to do now, but. Uh, and I can then later on, I can also save a new configuration and uh, load it later. Uh, from here, I also have direct access to the uh, user manual, just by clicking on there, and it opens uh, right away. So here I've got everything I need in case uh, I need further information on the, on the tablet, on, on the, that specific module. So let's start by the, the beginning, which is so basically setting up all the right parameters. I can do a zero here. And looks like my parameters are already quite good. So I've got the phase here, which I can change by plus and minus, or I can also just roll that, that button here. and i'm already on the 500 kilohertz frequency i can change the value just also by clicking on it and dialing the right value so that could be like one meg if i want it but of course as i said i'm using a 500 kilohertz probe so i'm gonna be back on 500 okay so zeroing again And here, for example, I've got my first crack, so I could put a bit more gain. Okay. Here I've got the intermediate one, and here the small one. So you can see, I could maybe change a bit the filters as well, if I wanted to. So that's basically how I would set up the uh, module in order to do my task and that configuration could as I said could be saved into a different file All right in display then I could just basically change everything so put everything back in the middle for example as you can see here I just basically change where the origin of my impedance plane was One, one nice feature is um, I could, for example, decide to put a time base on my graph and change the persistence to a longer one. So here I've got quite a, quite a long signal that I could refresh. And I could, for example, scan the area like this and pause the display and here I would be able to see my three different cracks. My display is paused here. 
um, and I could decide to isolate separately each trace and uh, save it in order to keep it on my screen. So in order to do that, I would use the, those cursors here on the, on the right side and I could move them by hand like this or rolling here this, uh, this button or just plus and minus as well. Person number two here. So here I've got my uh, the crack, which um, which is basically the one linked to the the biggest crack on my calibration block. So the one mil, and I'm going to plot it. I can put a label here, uh, and I'm going to put the as a label the, the just the dimension of the crack, for example. save it and I could move on to the, the next one and do the same thing here plot it as well put a label so this one is 0 0.5 and the last one is this one here There's a bit of noise here, so I could have changed the filters to have a, a cleaner signal. And I'm also plotting the, the last one. Uh, this one is 0 0.2 millimeters. Okay. So then if I go back on display, I can unpause the screen, uh, return to uh, just an impedance plane display, and a normal persistence, so back to 0 0.4, for example. And here you can see I still have my three traces on the screen. And the idea is that now, if I'm going on an actual aircraft or an actual component, and I want to check the, a crack, I would basically have a rough idea of the of the dimension of the crack by just comparing it to the, the one saved on my screen. So like here, I would know on aircraft that this crack is about one millimeter because it's about the same at the same size. Like this. This one would be about 0 0.5 and that one about 0 0.2 mil. From that, I could also decide to set up an alarm, for example, um, by going into that window, which is the third one. So as I said, once again, a step-by-step -step approach, first setting up the parameters, working on the display, and, and now adding some features in order to help the operator doing his job uh, properly uh, on an eight-hour shift, basically. So here, I've got different options. That could be either just a level like this, or that could be a box, for example, or a sector. Here, I'm gonna use a box. And I can set up everything like this. So make it to the right dimension. And let's say here I want to be able to detect uh, all the cracks above 0 0.2 millimeters. So what I would do is the, I would put the minimum value just above the previous crack I recorded, which was 0 0.2 mil. And now that would trigger the alarm if I... So without volume, that's not going to work, but here you can hear. I'm triggering the alarm as soon as I get into the box. I can also decide to remove the sound and just have the display visually. So that's that's basically uh, what it would do. The idea is that it just helps the operator uh, doing his job correctly by uh, not only having to focus at all time on the screen, but being able to focus also on his hands, on the 
the port is checking and having an information coming directly from the tablet. And then from the last, no, sorry, the, not the last one, but from the files window, I could here, uh, as I said before, load the configuration or save it now that I've done all my job. And I can also take screenshots from here. So I can, uh, this, the idea is that I would be able to work on my report directly from here by uh, taking screen, screenshots of the, either just the impedance plane or from all the screen. I could save the, save the screenshots and then as it's all based on Microsoft Windows, I can just open Word and uh, basically write my report directly from there and send it. And this conventional editor and module also has roto test capabilities. So here to use that one, I will have to uh, change the cable and uh, the probe obviously using a, a rotating scanner. Uh, and then I will just basically turn it on here and select which scanner I'm using, put on the, uh, the, right, uh, the right speed of rotation. And then I would uh, go back to the setting up uh, window where I would uh, once again set up all the right parameters to do the, the job the job and uh, and exactly as I described it before for the conventional ET but this time for Rototest so that's about it for for this eddy current module um, if you have any question feel free to to contact us directly and uh, and uh, we'd be happy to help you and answer Another module available on the Smart UE1 is called the CLAD tool. It uses the same eddy current technology but has been developed with a very different mindset. The CLAD tool is part of the range of tools called Go No Go, which means it gives a direct reading and does not allow any interpretation from the operator. This tool is referenced in the NTM 511030 and can be operated by a V1 mechanic. Let's see how it works. The CLAT tool kit comes with a pencil probe of 1 MHz and with a self-check block uh, made of aluminium with a cladded area and a non-cladded area. Same as before, here I need to open the right module, which is CLAT tool, by double-clicking on it. Then uh, when it opens, you will see this is a very simple interface where everything has been done to prevent any mistake from the operator which is why uh, we've been able to call this tool a go no go tool the first step here is to select the probe i'm using which in this case is the one on the right after a short initialization i will be able to perform the job but here you can see that if i place the probe on the block nothing happens the reason is I haven't performed the first step, which is do a self-check. So in order to do that, I just need to press the self-check button and follow once again all the steps. So you can see here, there's no way I can get it wrong. If I follow uh, step by step, uh, I will basically end up with having the right calibration and the tool ready to, to perform the task. First step is place on the clad area. So, and do a zero. So I just press zero here, leave the probe, and I have to do the same thing on the no clad area, which is the one on the right. So I'm doing the same thing here. And now my tool is ready. The final step before doing the job is I've got to mention if it's a painted area or if it's a non painted area. As for this demonstration, I'm using my the same self-check uh, self block there's no paint on this block so I just select no paint and now let's imagine I'm actually moving on the aircraft and doing my, my well, preparing my task I just have to do a final zero on a so-called sane area which would be one with clad so I'm just doing a zero again here and now my tool is ready to uh, look for lack of cladding. This could be after paint removal, after a small blend out, or maybe a lighting strike. And basically what I would do is I would just put the probe on the, uh, the area, 
scan it. If I'm not in contact with the area, the tool will let me know. So I can see a lift off orange alarm here. If I'm on the same area, I can see clad displayed in the middle. And if I'm now reaching an area with no clad, it would basically be written like this. So this is what we call a direct reading, and that's why it's defined as a go-no-go -no -go tool. And that's basically what the CLAD tool does. This is a very simple tool that B1 Mechanics can operate on a day-to-day -day basis to check for lack of cladding. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and uh, contact us directly for inquiries. Thank you very much. Wow, excellent guys. Thank you, thank you very much for that astonishing uh, hands-on demonstration. As you could see, guys, uh, our dear colleagues uh, performed this from the UK, uh, from Singapore, and now we are here broadcasting from France. But now, I think, uh, now since you already seen this, this capabilities and this flexibility in, and, and this easiness, of operation of our devices, I think we are ready for some uh, conclusions regarding the uh, device. Okay, the smart UE1 is now you've seen that it's increasing your efficiency thanks to its modular solution. We call it modular solution because it's packed in one single device by boosting the number of daily operations while ensuring constant quality control. As you have you already seen, you have plenty ways of get your inspections and always you will have repeatability, you will have a digital report to share and you have traceability, 100% traceability even from remote assistance that we can provide you uh, to your team, okay? It is increasing your inspector's capabilities and reactivity because as we mentioned before, uh, one one guy, one technician, one inspector with two or three uh, different uh, method certifications can operate the device and perform many different inspections at the, at, at the same moment and at the same location. Okay, uh, so you can save time and you can save money, you can cut off cost because uh, you react uh, in a different and variety uh, of ways. Okay. Uh, several ma major OEMs and MROs already use it, and as, I, as, as we stated before, uh, it's not restrained to aerospace. So if you're working on oil and gas or m mining industry, you can uh, try the device and see how can the device can adapt to your uh, current needs. Okay, guys. So let's make your inspection more efficient, flexible and reliable while controlling your cost because all of this is for helping you guys and your operations to uh, be costly wise okay to 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 help you on this uh, challenge to come regarding uh, costs okay now uh, we will proceed with the q a session i will read some questions from the live chat and my colleagues will answer Please notice that all your questions will be answered. You just have to send your question to contact at testia.com and don't forget to write a, a webinar on the subject, okay? If you demand uh, this presentation, we can share it with you, of course, uh, just to have time to read it quite uh, an easy. And please uh, ask any kind of question that you may need to know, okay? So, uh, hello guys, you there? Hi Adrian. Yes. Uh, guys, thank you very much for your, for your hands-on uh, demonstration, it was astonishing. I'm pretty sure that uh, people love it. Uh, do you have any, any other comment, any other recommendation for our, our audience? I think that the uh, I think I think that the key selling point of the UE1 Adrian is, is that 
um, it, it's, it's so versatile and that there are so many features already on one instrument that um, a key point to remember is that, that all of this fits inside one box. So that's one box to take uh, when you're traveling, it's one box to take onto um, an airfield, um, and it's only one box that you need to worry about, really. Um, so there, there, there is a cost saving on transporting the instruments as well as the time saving that the, that the multi-modules provide. Excellent. And, and you, Maxim, you have uh, any, any other uh, comment or uh, experience to share with our audience? Well, I think that on top of that, what's really interesting is the, uh, interesting is the fact that you can literally connect it to everything and uh, therefore you, you've got much more efficiency because you, you're doing your task, you're working on the report directly from there, and you can... And Export that you can send it. You can upload it on a on a cloud platform. You can have different users from different locations uh, working uh, on the or at, at, um, at least reading the same thing as you. You can have remote assistance. So the, the all the connectivity capabilities are a very significant uh, help in terms of efficiency and in terms of operations for the users. Excellent. Yes, yes, you're totally right. So here you go, guys. Uh, those are our recommendations, our comments from our technical sales manager from the UK and Maxim from Singapore. So, so if you have any other uh, further query, any other need, please don't hesitate to, to contact us through contact at testia.com. If you have specific questions uh, regarding this webinar, please write on the subject webinar and uh, we, uh, we are open for all your questions, okay? Uh, first one that uh, popped up from uh, email is uh, regarding, I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious, it's uh, regarding price. Okay, so guys, regarding pricing, uh, remember that U1, it's a, a flexible platform, so we must talk from brackets, that starts on uh, 15,000, can start on $15,000 and go uh, to $30,000 or $32,000 depending on the, on the different models that you select, on the different basic uh, models or, or extra applications that you select and depending on uh, if you need plenty of uh, accessories like cables and probes. Regularly, uh, NDT operators already have uh, some probes and some cables. Uh, by fortune, our device is flexible and it can uh, support and to operate with, uh, let's say, maybe 80% of existing uh, cable options and probes on the market. Okay, so that will be the answer. Please don't hesitate to contact my, my colleagues uh, we have uh, plenty more colleagues. We, we are operating on eight regions of the world. So please don't hesitate to contact any, anyone uh, on Testia and uh, using the email contact at testia.com. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm not sure if we are not uh, receiving plenty of more questions at this point. So, uh, guys, any any other comment to add, or to thank your people, or to call your people from your region? Any message? The one thing to consider as well, Adrian, but um, on on price. Um, is that um, there are there are few uh, instruments which allow you to compile the report, as Maxime so um, so eloquently put, um, to compile the report on the instrument. Um, that coupled with our uh, remote assistance tool means that um, the kit and the expert can be in completely separate locations, yet they can be together. So. Um, we people on aerospace um, especially uh, no longer um, have to wait such long durations for um, some some expert feedback or from a second opinion um, they can do it instantly on the instrument um, 
using our remote assistance software. Um, we are entering into a period of having to um, think and work smarter and more, and, and we're going to have to become more efficient. Um, so I think the UE1 is an excellent choice um, and will really will really come to life um, in, in, in the new world that we're entering into. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, I, uh, I think uh, we are in a in a in a right moment to offer this solution to uh, a market that, given the actual needs and the actual situation, uh, will require more flexibility and more efficiency. Uh, okay, uh, if you guys, you have any other final comment? Because uh, we approach to yeah. Actually, I, I could just add something. Is that uh, after what Matt just said, is that the, the tool in itself is so flexible and uh, has so many capabilities that doesn't actually meet just one requirement that a company could have. And therefore, that makes it relevant in a lot of different kind of situations. That could be, let's say, uh, a new small MRO with, uh, uh, let's say, just ramping up on the activity and building the capabilities. And in that case, you can have some kind of all-in-one kit that is really convenient to perform all kinds of inspections. But on the other hand, you could also be a very well-established MRO with a lot of tools already in the hangar. And still, uh, this kind of MRO usually uh, does a lot of traveling or is, uh, on, is located on big airports where you need to go on, on, on aircraft that are not, not already um, very near. And, and the, the fact that you can just travel with one uh, one kit where everything is in there is much more convenient. So that's relevant for any kind of MROs, that's very relevant in manufacturing as well, and for any other kind of usage, for also different industries like oil and gas. So my point here is basically any kind of, uh, of uh, need for inspection tooling that uh, customers may have could be met by this kind of tooling. Yeah, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. So uh, here, here you go, guys. That was our uh, technical experts and technical sales managers' uh, opinion. So uh, the ball is in your court, guys. So uh, from our side, uh, we we must say thanks to everybody for joining us. Uh, please leave your comments and give your thumbs up. And please don't forget to hit subscribe button and activate the bell for notifications. Okay, stay tuned for our next webinar. Who we will talk, we will remain talking about uh, efficiency and cost savings and time saving. So uh, please don't forget that we are here for you. We're working at home, but we still working for you. Okay. So thank you very much, Maxim. Thank you very much, Matthew. And thanks for everyone seeing this uh, streaming. So. Uh, at the next time, okay? See you.